Hello and welcome to another history tour. So today we're at the top of Handsworth on Waverley Lane. And what we're going to be looking at today is the former High Hazels Colliery, the former High Hazels Coke Works, and the adjoining tramway, which went all the way through here at High Hazels Park and ended up in Darno. So we're starting off here and we're going to make our way all the way down to Darnell and we're going to follow the old track bed of this uh, narrow gauge railway and we're going to see if we can find anything what's, what's left of it. Now just as we reach the bottom of the path, the first thing what we find, what gives some clues to what once stood here is this obviously some part of a former building. Now we're just going to have a look at the bricks and see if we can find any markings on them. See where they originated from. Now I've had a good look on the uh, some of the bricks what have fallen off and I can't actually find any markings to find out where these bricks were made or where they come from. But I am told this building used to be a winding house of some sort. And as you can see, as we walk around here, it's more intact than it is up the top end. Okay, so just after the old building remains, what we've just had a little look at, we reach a bridge. Now this is quite a modern bridge. It was replaced quite a few years ago, but this would have been the entrance to High Hazel's Colliery. And the building you can see in front of us is now McLaren, I believe. So looking down at the bridge, you can see the original parts of the former bridge just down below and how it's been built on top of. So where I'm stood right now, if you go back 110 years, I would have been stood on top of a railway tunnel. Now this tunnel was commonly known as Darnell Tunnel and sometimes known as Hansworth Tunnel. Now when this tunnel was first built it could allow two lines of traffic through. But as the coal industry grew around this area with the opening of uh, High Hazel's Colliery, Orgreave, well the traffic got a lot lot busier and this created a bottleneck and this was known as the Darnell bottleneck and it caused a hell of a lot of rail traffic build up in this area so in 1912 they resolved the problem and the hill under which the tunnel was built was completely landscaped and then the tunnel underneath was actually demolished with explosives so that was the end of that so just over the other side of the bridge now this is the site of High Hazel's Colliery, shafts number one and shafts number two. Now, this colliery was originally owned by someone called Thomas Hounsfield, and he lived in Paris up until 1900. He then leased the High Hazel's Colliery to the Waverley Coal Company. Now, High Hazel's Colliery Shafts number one and shafts number two were located just here. But shaft number three was located just down the road at Morrison's and Catcliffe. Where the roundabout is there, that is roughly where the shaft number three existed. Okay, so we're just walking around the perimeter of the old colliery site. One thing that really sticks out is we can see we've got a big piece of weathered concrete which has got some uh, some iron sticking out of it so this was probably once part 
of the old colliery or the coke works now around this area there's not a lot to see a lot of it has been completely landscaped and and changed forever but there is some of those unusual poles sticking out of the ground like we see at Orgreave which I'm told is to release uh, gases from the shafts on the ground so just another bit to show you now we can see a lump of concrete which has got some bricks in it which is uh, may have been part of the shafts on this site or other such buildings and obviously it's been dug out of the ground and uh, just left here okay so this is just aside from uh, from history for a minute but this is rather unusual now this is the Sheffield Parkway and usually if you saw me walking towards this it wouldn't be very good but this I believe is the only legal crossing of the Sheffield Parkway for pedestrians without the use of a bridge or an underpass so it's perfectly legal for you to cross the Sheffield Parkway just here cross over into what is Kingsley Park Golf Course so there's a little interesting fact for you now the tramway what we spoke about earlier by my reckoning the start of that tramway would have been bang in the middle of the Sheffield Parkway or the Rotherham side of the parkway which is where we're currently stood so unfortunately I don't think there's going to be anything left of that but we'll continue on and we're going to go into High Hazels Park where it continued down towards Darnell and we're going to see if we can find anything what's left of this tramway now just behind me is the bridge which we spoke about earlier and we've turned right down here because just at the side of the Lincoln to Sheffield Railway was the adjoining coke works now these were known as the high hazels coke ovens but also known locally as the becker coke works so we're going to go and have a look and see if there's anything left of that now i very much doubt it now again the coke works very vague information on it apparently opened in 1919 and closed by 1925 and one would suspect but the coke ovens down at Orgreave would have had a big part to play in that. Very close by. I'll just show you on a map now just how close they were. Now we're just walking along what would have been the old coke works now. And luckily there's some tree felling going on. A bit of a controversial subject in Sheffield. But that is giving us an opportunity to look into the overgrown bushes and stuff like that it's give, given a bit of daylight so we can actually see if there's anything remaining of anything what was here but we've been drawing a blank so far there's uh, no sign of anything what used to be here okay so just behind me is where the drift should be the former Haymore drift mine as you can see behind me just where them trees are that should follow the old drift. So we're gonna go into this field now, we're gonna have a see what we can find. Uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna find. I've tried to check it out on Google Maps, but it doesn't really tell you if, uh, if there's much left. So it might be a waste of time or we might find the entire drift, I'm not sure, but we're gonna go and check it out anyway and see what we can find. Now, like I said, this drift mine was called the Haymore Drift and Apparently by 1935 it was disused. But apparently this linked up to Handsworth Colliery, which in turn linked up to Orgreave, which in turn linked up to Treaton, and which I believe Treaton linked up to Thurcroft. So in theory, at one time you could have entered the drift here in Handsworth and walked all the way underground to Thurcroft in Rotherham which is quite a trek but we're just going to go and see if we can find anything of this uh, drift mine now 
Now this area has not really been developed. Where we've just been before has been uh, heavily landscaped with the new McLaren factory and the new bridge being put in, but this is just a farmer's field, so luckily it's not being touched by any major developments. So fingers crossed there's uh, still something left. And it's quite obvious, but there's been some uh, some industry here. There's, uh, I'm not even going to hazard a guess as to what that is, but maybe a supporting uh, post. But there's uh, quite a few things just scattered around the ground. Now, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The bad news is my shoes are extremely muddy. But the good news is we found the drift. And this, I believe, is the old drift. So you can see the old brick wall just over there. And that wall runs all the way down in this depression in the ground. And this is where coal will have been, uh, will have been brought up. I'm told by a, uh, a local resident who we've just bumped into actually. He uh, lives in the Waverley Cottages and he actually bought it off the off a former worker at the High Hazels Colliery and this drift. And uh, he's told us this is where the old tracks were, what brought the coal up. And just as you can see, as we're stood here now, you can see the depression in the ground which is the uh, former site of the drift. Now exactly where the entrance is, I'm not sure yet. We're gonna go and have another look. There seems to be a large pipe of some sort here, which has obviously been uh, damaged quite a lot. But possibly from the uh, old workings here. And another large pipe here. Again, I'm unsure what these, what, what purpose these serve, but they're definitely not native to a farmer's fields. And we're just at the other side of where we were when we first found this drift. And as you can see, that's the uh, part of the stone wall which I pointed out and there's a, a little pipe next to it There's quite a large section of wall just there. And just here, we've got some railway sleepers. Deep into the overgrowth now, but There's uh, plenty of stone wall and, and other such things. And I'm unsure where the actual entrance was, whether that was at the other end where we've just come from and it's been sealed off good and proper, or whether the entrance is somewhere up here. Because certainly as we've gone along up this way, there's certainly been a lot more things knocking about like walls and old pipes and stuff like that. Railway sleepers and such, so we're going to carry on and we're going to see 
what else we can find. A very good view from up here. The uh, trees aren't as There we have it. You can see the uh, how the land's being cut out. But there's not that many more remains. Now once upon a time there would have been a track laying on the floor here pulling coal tubs up out of the drift so we've definitely found the old drift definitely found it but it seems as though the uh, entrance to the drift has been sealed off well and truly but there's definitely still remains around here uh, quite a few remains of what used to be the industry around here so so we're just walking past Waverley Cottages now I just want to show you this photo now this photo I can't actually credit it to anyone because I'm not sure where it comes from I can't even make out the name on the bottom of the painting but it's a very impressive painting and if you know who is responsible for it please get in touch but this painting will show you Waverley Cottages in the foreground and it will show you what the landscape looked like just behind them Now we've just arrived in High Hazels Park. I didn't cross at the pedestrian crossing which we looked at earlier on the Sheffield Parkway because getting hit by a car at 70 miles an hour wasn't on my list of things to do today. But we have come around the, uh, the Hansworth Way and we've just arrived here now. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna have a look and see if we can find any of the old tramway. So I'm just gonna put a map on your screen now and it should show you where this tramway went all the way down to Darnell. And it went around the perimeter of High Hazels Park. Now obviously part of the tramway where it started, started in the middle of the parkway. So we're going to have a little walk down that route and see if there's any, uh, any remnants. Now we're just in High Hazels Park and the house behind me is very significant indeed because it was built by the first ever Lord Mayor of Sheffield, which was William Jeffcock. Now that name may sound familiar as the water fountain, which is located on Hansworth Road, is called the Jeffcock Memorial. So yeah, this house was built by uh, William Jeffcock, the first ever Lord Mayor of Sheffield, and he died in Ireland, but was transported all the way back to St Mary's Church to be buried. So that's quite a journey after you've died, so. Now, what I'm stood on right now used to be an actual highway and this was the road what led from Darnell all the way through to Catcliffe. Now this ended up roughly where Morrison's is now. We mentioned that previously with the number three shaft at High Hazel's Colliery. And that particular stretch of road I am told was called Chamberlain's Hill. So once upon a time this was a through road right through towards Catcliffe. Now when the Sheffield Parkway was built that cut straight through it so it is uh, it's no longer used as a highway, but it still exists partially as a uh, footpath through High Hazels Park. Now, we are following the former route of the old tramway round the perimeter of High Hazels Park, but along the way, this is one of the former mine shafts. Now, I'm not entirely sure which pit this come from, but I'm gonna show you a map now of all these shafts in the area. And as you can see, there is a, there's quite a lot of them. Now, I've heard reference to a certain pit around here called Candle Main. And uh, there is photos of uh, that pit and workers of that pit taking part in the 1912 coal strike. So this may be part of that or what remains of that now this a few years ago this is quite a new uh, 
quite a new bit of concrete this uh, quite a few years ago the shaft was collapsing in so uh, it had to be reinforced and made safe and that's why it looks quite new and just next door to that it seems but there's a quite possibly could be another cap shaft it's got a square fence around it so uh, it's obviously meant to keep people out but it's uh, not in the best of conditions anymore so this may well have been another shaft Now, just as we're following the old route of the tramway, this is the first bit of uh, potential remnants we've found. Now, there's a bit of railway sleeper just there. So that tells me, but this may well be the remains of the uh, tramway, which ran all the way down here and uh, ended up at the Britannia Road coal depot. So, this is it. This is where the coal from High Hazel's Colliery would have ended up. Now, just behind me is where the Halfway House pub used to stand. Now, that was built and opened in the late 1800s, so this would have been a, uh, a popular place for workers at the coal depot and from High Hazel's Colliery making their way home. Unfortunately, it was demolished in 2009 after being derelict for a few years. So the coal depot would have been just behind me where these new houses are being built now. Now, in this area, there are a few buildings which do look like they date from around the same time when the coal depot opened. Just like an auto center, just on the corner of Catcliffe Road, just down there. So that could have been part of the coal depot, but not much of it exists if it is. It's all uh, new houses and, and stuff now, so this would be the end of the journey. So we've started right up at the top where High Hazel's Colliery were, and we have followed exactly where the coal would have ended up. Now, Darnell, once upon a time, from collieries around this area, Darnell was providing half of Sheffield with house coal. So Darnell is quite a... Uh, a historical coal mine in place, believe it or not.